I think it's important to, to find a superintendent that has the right fit. And so, and that is selected, that is particularly be able to focus on the needs of our community of Charlotte Mecklenburg. It's the 17th largest school district in the nation. So we cannot have a good superintendent without a strong board. So it all starts with the board. The board is the boss of the superintendent. Some think that's the other way around, but it's not. So you have to have a strong board that is able, that has established goals that can give the direction that is necessary to the superintendent. And that direction, it has to be measurable goals then that the superintendent has um, in order to be able to, to have a checks and balance on performance of that superintendent. That superintendent has to be able to operate a $2 billion budget and to be able to manage those funds in a way that is beneficial, not only for the CMS system itself, but you have to keep in mind what the ultimate goal is, is to produce um, excellent students, ex excellent educational experiences. So those things are very important. That superintendent has to be able to be able to connect with the community, right? So um, we often hear like, oh, we need that this is not just a school system issue that we have, but there are community issues. But if the if the school system and the board and the superintendent is not trusted, then you're not gonna get the buy-in from the community. So that superintendent has a unique task of, they have to be able to realize that they have to not only be um, exceptional in organizing the administration of, of CMS, but also be a motivator to the staff, but not only to the staff, but to students and to families. So that is key. One of the one of the, the number one things that I think of is with the superintendent, they cannot have a deficit view of children. And that, when I say that, it can't be something that we just think, oh, um, it's because children are from a certain socioeconomic class that the expectation is set low. The bar needs to be set high for all children so that all, because if the bar is low, then nobody's gonna rise to the occasion. So we have to make sure that superintendent is very inept in raising the ceiling and the floor at the same time. They have to be able to come with some innovative ways in order to do that. And the other thing is, is that one of the things that is very important is that they have to be not afraid to make changes. They have to be able to make changes in order for uh, to, to navigate the huge system of CMS. And the, the core issues um, that, that need to be addressed, you know, should come from the top down as to bottom up. Like this is not necessarily um, a bottom level issue, but top level issues in order to make our system, our school system better. So what do you, my, the question I would ask is similar to something um, around uh, performance. Like how do you improve student outcomes or what are your, your ideas for improving student outcomes for people of all, or students of all socioeconomic classes. Um, recognizing that um, some students have greater support systems at home, some students don't, like how do we bring along all the students? Like what are some examples that you have been successful in doing that or leading those efforts? And the two part thing is, that I would wanna know is, how have you addressed teacher retention? right? Because any superintendent is very limited about what they can do about teacher pay, right? So how do we, what are some other ways that you have been able to retain your seasoned teachers, your experienced teachers? How have you been able to recruit um, new teachers? And what kind of support systems have you put around teachers? Um, those, are, those are two key things that I would want to know from that superintendent. So I think there's some opportunity. So one thing is, I can't, you know, the board is the center kind of everything. So one of the things is hire a great superintendent that can address these issues. Like that has to be something that the board does to make sure that that superintendent puts pieces in place that will deal with teacher recruitment and incentive. But the number one thing is as an employment attorney that has worked with large organizations, I know for a fact that if you have a, you have to create a workplace that people are happy. Um, and that is whether you pay them $10 an hour or $110,000 an hour, right? You have to make sure if you want um, better outcome or better participation, better buy-in from your staff for them to be able to recruit, to be able to recruit people for they to have a great represent, rep, 
reputation to work there, then it has to be a place that teachers enjoy to work. That comes from the top-down issue. So the superintendent has to be focused on, you know, has to be focused on that. So that's one of the ways that we can do it. The second way is, I believe there's some unique opportunities with collaboration with city, council, uh, city, county, um, private corporations and community that can help, um, that the board can, can facilitate um, through intergovernmental efforts and community partnership efforts and even the direction of some community partner efforts um, to our superintendent is um, in order to come up with some unique incentives for teachers. I think there, there may be some opportunity um, for some housing incentives per personally with, um, with private sector uh, businesses and, 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 and uh, residence owners um, that have large apartment buildings here in Charlotte. There may be some opportunities there that I have been exploring that seem that may have be, there may be some representation that, you know, that is something that we should look into. So I think unique opportunities such as that should be looked into. I think I'm not sure. Uh, well, that is a broad that is a broad question. I think very much so, as I just mentioned, is that there has to be a culture that it supports teachers, and that is a culture that treats them as professionals that they are. Right. There are some opportunities again that the superintendent can take in order to make a great working place for teachers. Again, that ties back to the board. Like, so I kind of keep saying like everything kind of ties back to the board. It kind of starts with the board and then everything kind of trickles down from there to what type of school system we have. But that's very much so with the type of superintendent uh, that we have. Again, we have to create a place that teachers are invested in, teachers are appreciated, teachers will be able to have input. And one of the things that, again, is that I think that you know, in the conversations, the board is, you know, is doesn't operate the day to day to day operations for for the school system. But one of those questions in vetting a superintendent is very much like, how do we retain teachers? Like, what type of input do you want to get from teachers? I believe very much so the teachers should have buy in on um, leaders like leadership in schools like that makes a, a, a huge difference. Like how, what kind of investment are we making into developing great leaders of schools? Like those are the type of things that superintendents should be paying attention to. So would that be taken from honestly where any parent should be taking up, taking, take, paying attention to is that your child when they leave CMS should be college or career ready. That's, that is it, growth is great. It does give you a measure of, it does give you a measure of where you're going and what direction you're going, but growth from the, from the lowest bottom to a not so low bottom is, is not great, right? Like, so we have to, even though we have to make, we have to pay attention to growth, but we need to make, we need to be making strides in growth. Growth from the bottom, you know, the lowest bottom to the, you know, maybe just above that is, is, is great, but it's still not acceptable about or where we should be. So we have to keep in mind when we're listening, where are we growing from and where are we growing to? But again, the ultimate goal, the pace that we're getting at the ultimate goal, which is that every student should leave college or career ready. That's the challenge, right? That's the challenge we're talking about. Like that's, that's why we're here. That's why we're running. Like, I think that we have to have a school system that people are, are invested in. In order to do that, you know, it takes new leadership. Sometimes it takes new leadership. Um, we have to have a school system that people believe in and have faith in and that are producing the outcomes that are, that are required, frankly, um, that, that we produce. So when, you, when people, I know, I, I generally think people want to be invested in a public school system, but some parents believe they don't have a choice. They just don't have a choice, and that's how they end up outside of CMS. So this is a massive effort. Like, so the image of the school system has to change. The image of the board has to change. The image of a, we have to have a superintendent that people believe in that's going to be able to um, turn things around. That's why I said specifically, um, when we asked for what are we looking for in a superintendent, like one of the things is they have to be a motivator. Like they have to have a connection to the community, and they have to connect with a broad range of community because you know Charlotte is diverse. We have diverse pockets of of communities that that their needs have to be met as well. We have a majority minority school system. So the superintendent 
it definitely has to uh, pay attention to those things and those in a broad socioeconomic uh, pattern. So in order to get those investments so we can get community partners, um, make it easier for community partners to engage with the system. Like there are plenty of, uh, you know, I don't want to say plenty, there are, are there opportunities that I know that that have been missed with some community partners because they have not been able to necessarily, um, you know, you know, enter agreements into with CMS and, you know, that want to help. So we have to channel all this energy um, and to get people invested in the school system. And when I say invested, I mean even people that don't have children. So one of the things, so outside of physically safe, right? So everybody agrees that we know our buildings have to have physical, like we have to have locking mechanisms, we have to have abilities to alert uh, police when it's necessary, um, if there is some issue, um, you know, some, you know, God forbid some, you know, active shooter situation. Like, so we have to have like those core security, physical security things in place. But the other thing is that we often forget about, this is again, how we connect to the community, right? So we, we often hear that when there are, even when there are fights in school, that these are community issues. Those are the words that are often used, but the school has to be connected in the community. So how can you say we do that? So if there's, you know, we have collaborative efforts like with city and the county, for one example, um, the city has violence disruptors, right? They have a new violence, you know, it's not new, but they have a violence disruptor program. I believe just a million dollars was just committed to the violence disruptor programs, I believe. Don't quote me on that, that number might be wrong, but I think it's a million dollars with the violence disruptor program uh, through the city. Those people have a, their ear to the ground, right? So they know what's happening in the community, often with young people they have to be connected with our school system, right? So that we can know that, you know, these, the, these rumblings in the community happening that may be happening with students. So that is a connection with the, that's the connection with um, CMS. So we have to have those collaborative efforts. Like it can't be just operating a silo in order to deal with safety issues. The other thing is that we may often forget about too is that um, we have to make sure that the funding is attached to, um, are allocated to access to mental health support for our students. Not only our students, but our families. So I know um, having you know prior practice in the um, the child uh, pro uh, child protective service area is where I first when I first started practicing law. That's the area that I worked in. I know that if you just treat the student and not necessarily have services for a family, then you're not going to make much headway. So there has to be partnerships and opportunities with the county, with some of our private sector health organizations that we are, you know, if there are issues with students that, you know, that they are able to make those connections with the student and the family.